Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. I've been running. Trying to be here on time. Come on in. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning to my IG family. Good morning, Roberta. Miss Sarah Rita, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, uh, Roderick. Come on in here. Good morning, Chris. I hope that everyone is doing well this morning. I see Dr. Chance Lynch, my brother, whom I love very dearly. I know Faith Church is getting ready to go in this morning. Come on in here, family. And if you all will, uh, you can go ahead and, and invite some people in. Uh, because I know somebody needs a word. Good morning, Cassandra. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and give a few more moments and uh, we'll let a few more people in and we'll, we'll get down to business. Good morning, Tab. Good morning, Edith, my childhood friend. Good morning, Tamara. Uh, Gary, um, good morning to you. I hope that uh, your wife is doing well this morning. Tell her uh, that we are sending our love from IPC to her. Uh, good morning, Connie. I see all of my family coming in here. It's always a blessing to see you all logging in here. And I, I cannot express how much I miss you all. So, uh, and I, of course, you all already know that. You already know that. So, uh, good morning, Patsy. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. And we're going to dive on in. Father, we thank you this morning for your sovereignty. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Uh, great is your faithfulness toward us. Uh, Lord, we just come to exalt you. We come to lift you up. We come to say that you are amazing, that you are worthy, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank you, God, for breathing into us this morning the breath of life we thank you for creating within us a clean heart and renewing a right spirit within us god we thank you that it is in you that we live move and have our very existence lord we thank you lord that things are not as bad as they could be we thank you god that that your mercy is new every single morning great is thy faithfulness toward us uh, the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein and so god we come to um to, uh, for you to impart to us today some wisdom. Give us a word, God, that will help us to uh, push forward, Lord, in these uh, unprecedented times. Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to cover us in the blood of your son, that you would wrap your arms around us, that you would encourage us, God, and that we would put our trust in you. For the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge you and you will direct our path. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID-19. We ask for your healing to go across this land, across this nation. Uh, God, we pray that people will turn their hearts back to you. We pray, God, that you would do what you do best. Uh, lead and guide your people to victory, Lord. We thank you that things are as well as they are, uh, for we know that your grace is sufficient. Uh, we pray for every pastor who's going to stand in the gap this morning. We pray for every parishioner who's going to listen. We pray for every sinner uh, that they will be drawn unto you, God, for the scripture teaches us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your word says that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right mind and a right spirit within us. And we pray for those who are struggling this morning, those who are struggling in relationships, those who are struggling in their vertical relationship with you, God, those who are struggling on their job, those who are struggling financially, 
those who are struggling within themselves. God, we pray for those who are going through bereavement this morning. We pray for peace in our city. We pray for peace in this world. Uh, we pray, God, uh, that you would just step into the midst of this chaos and, and that you would bring some peace to it, Lord. For you, the scripture says that in this life we will have trouble. So we know, God, that we will overcome all of this. Uh, we just place this uh, service in your hands and ask that you would uh, just lead us and guide us. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I want you all to turn with me, turn with me to uh, 1 Kings chapter 5. 1 Kings chapter 5. Good morning to all of those I have not spoken to. Good morning to you. It is good to, uh, to have you all on here this morning. Good morning, Minister Bush. I saw Minister Chuck Beard as well. Good morning, Brandy. Uh, Satari, good morning to you. Tommy, Pam, I see all of you. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 5, verse... I'm going to read um, verses 2, 3, and 4. And verse 5. 2, two through 5. The word of God says, Then Solomon sent word to Hiram, saying... Uh, you know that David, my father, was unable to build a house for the name of the Lord, his God, because the wars which surrounded him until the Lord put them under the sole of his feet. But now the Lord, my God, has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune. Behold, I intend to build a house, a house for uh, the name of the Lord, my God. As the Lord spoke to David, my father, saying, Your son, whom I will set on your throne, in your place, he will build the house for my name. Okay, so I just read to you 1 Kings chapter 5, verses 2 through, uh, through 5. And uh, I want to give you a subject this morning. Uh, and some of this will be familiar to uh, Inner Peace because we did start out the year talking about God giving us rest on every side. And uh, I am here this morning simply to remind you that when God gives you a word, that, uh, that his word is going to come to fruition. God is not a man that he should lie. Everything that he has ever said in his word, uh, it, it, is, it is trusted, it is tried, it is truth, and it will come to pass. So I am here simply uh, to remind you uh, that it is your season to enter your rest. I want somebody to type that in. Enter your rest. And I'm going to break all of this down and it'll all make sense here in a moment. But it is very important, especially in these unprecedented times, that the people of God know how to find that place of rest. That place of rest and that place of refuge. That place of rest and that place of refuge is very important right now. And so, uh, uh, as in the text, in chapter 5, this is Solomon. Uh, the word was sent to Solomon. And Solomon was pretty much saying that my father could not build a house for the Lord. Now, now Solomon's father was David. Let's go ahead and get that out there. Solomon's father was David. David could not build uh, a temple for the Lord because he was always surrounded by war. And that is a word for somebody this morning. You cannot build anything for God until you cease. From going to war. A lot of us are fighting the wrong battles. And David could not build a temple for God because he was always surrounded by war. So God made him a promise that he would not build the house, but his son would build the house. Okay, so um, I want to start out by saying this. Anytime you are building something for God, there are two, there are several things that you don't need in your way. One, you don't need adversaries. You're going to have them, but you don't need them. You don't need adversaries. Secondly, you don't need Satan. You don't need Satan. Thirdly, you don't need instruments of Satan to oppose the work. You don't need instruments of Satan to oppose the work or to divert from the work. You remember when Nehemiah was trying to build a wall for uh, the people of God to keep them secure and to keep them safe and to keep the enemy out? Uh, that There were people from the inside who was trying to divert uh, him from the work. 
You know, so anytime you are on a kingdom assignment and anytime you are working for the Lord, whatever he called you to do, when you begin to operate in that, you're going to always be hit with opposition. I, I need you to understand that. Stop thinking that you can do God's work and be void of opposition. You know, opposition is going to come and sometimes it is necessary. Sometimes it is necessary. I don't think I don't think it's always necessary, but I think that sometimes that opposition is necessary to to give birth to whatever God has in store. OK. OK. So and, and it's very important that that you don't and that you are able to discern instruments of Satan, instruments of Satan. When, when you're dealing with an instrument of Satan, you're dealing with people who are on a mission, people who are on a mission sent by Satan to get in the way of what God has called you to do. And this is why it is very important for you to be able to find that place of peace. Because if you cannot find your place of peace in the midst of war, then you will miss out on what God has called you to do. We all are dealing with so many different distractions right now. We are dealing with the COVID-19. We are dealing with uh, senseless crimes in our city. We are dealing with injustice. We are dealing with so many things that, that Satan has sent to take our focus off of what God has called us to do. All of us are responsible for completing our assignment. So many of us want to experience elevation. We want to go to new levels. We want to experience God in new ways, but we can't even complete the simple assignments that he's assigned us to. So it's very important to know what God called you to do. Somebody type that in. You, it, it is very important. It is essential that you know, first of all, what God has called you to do. And if you've been in church for multiple years and you've been sitting under Bible teaching, you know, then at some point you have to come face to face with what God has called you to do. And, and I know one thing he did not call you, you to do. He did not call you to become a sanctuary statue. That's one thing that God did not call you to do. He did not save you for you to sit in somebody's sanctuary looking all cute and pretty. You know, that's not what he called you to do. He called you from something and he called you to something. There is somebody assigned to whatever God called you to do. And unless you do it, you're going to hinder somebody else's yeah, deliverance. You're going to hinder somebody from walking into what they need to walk into because you are necessary. God wants to use you. God needs to use you. OK, so let me uh, jump into something. Uh, and so since we're talking about entering that place of peace, one of the essential ingredients for entering a place of peace is faith. When you have arrived at faith, at faith, OK, there are certain indications that let you know that you have reached a good place. OK, a lot of people don't know when they are walking in faith. A lot of people don't know how to discern when they're going the right way. They don't know how to discern if they are operating in faith. They just don't know. But there are certain indications that let you know that you are going in the right direction. Um, the one and eternal evidence of faith is called rest. Somebody type that in rest. R-E-S-T. When you, Lord have mercy. Once you find that place of rest within your heart and within your soul and within your inner man, then you will not be as affected by what's going on on the outside. Oh, let me, that's worth saying again. Once you find that place of peace in your heart, once you find that place of peace in your mind, once you find that place of peace in your inner man, then you will not be as affected by the things that are going on outside. The reason so many people are drawn in and taken in by all of this stuff that's surrounding them is because they don't have inner peace. If you don't have inner peace, then you need to be trying to find inner peace today because inner peace is necessary in order for you to... Um, to overcome these obstacles, over, in order for you to overcome this pandemic, in order for you to overcome what people are saying about you, in order for you to overcome your naysayers, in order for you to overcome all of the injustice that's going on in this world, you must have inner peace. You must have inner peace. You must have it. Okay, so, so once you find that place of rest, 
you can safely say that you are walking in faith. Okay. Remember, the Bible defines faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so when you are operating in the realm of faith, you are heading in a direction that you may not be able to see with your literal with your with your your literal eyes. Okay, when you're dealing with faith, you're, you, we're talking about you seeing with your spiritual eyes. Okay, you cannot, in order to operate in faith, you have to believe God for what you don't see yet. I hope somebody is hearing me. In order for you to truly operate in faith and to embrace this rest that God is trying to give you, you must believe God for your not yet. You must believe God for not yet. And it sounds foolish to people who don't know him. It sounds foolish to the world for you to believe something that you cannot see, for you to be waiting with anticipation for a promise. It don't make sense for worldly people, okay? It, it won't make sense to them. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Why, why is it safe to say that you can walk in faith? Because when you are walking in faith, you are believing God. Now, I can see if you were believing men and women for something, then that might be a little rocky and shaky. But anytime you are believing God for something, you can stand on a solid foundation because God is not a man that he should lie. Okay? So rest, rest is the biblical evidence that, of faith in action. Okay? Rest is the biblical evidence that faith is in action. OK, anytime you don't have rest, you have unrest. Anytime you are not operating in faith, most likely you are operating in fear. OK, so so but when you are, when you begin to operate in faith and you begin to embrace that rest that God has provided for you, uh, then it comes um, as an evidence that your faith is in action. Some stuff. Come on, y'all. Some stuff we just don't worry about anymore. A lot of things we used to worry about, a lot of things we used to stress about, that is a sign of unbelief, really. It means that, that there is something that I'm not believing God for. I hear the word, I know the word, but I have not embraced it. Once you begin to embrace the truth and you begin to embrace God's word, then it is safe for you to, to sit back and to rest. Not worry, but rest. Okay? Faith causes you to look at life through a different set of lenses. When you are operating in faith, you don't look at, at, at life through the natural realm. You see it, but that's not how you view life. You look at life through a different set of lenses. You're looking through the spirit, okay? A lot of us, a lot of us have not even began to tap into uh, what God has for us. It's because we always look at things from a natural uh, perspective. You know, in order to to get what God has for you and to hear what he's saying to you, you got to be able to, to tap into another dimension. You know, you, you got to be you got to be able to go higher. You got to be able to hear God in the spirit. OK. And so faith causes us to look at life through another set of lenses. And faith also causes you to look at life, uh, look at your life in the hands of a sovereign God. OK. When you look at life, you're looking at your life in the hands of a God who can hold you. OK, when you know that your life is in the hands of God and that God is not going to drop you and that God is not going to fumble your life, then you can sit back and you can rest. Now, I wanted to talk about the fact that Solomon said that God was going to give him rest on every side. God is going to give him rest on every side. Now, now listen to me, and I need you to hear me clearly. A lot of people cannot build a life, cannot build a family, cannot build a business, and cannot even build a brand. And the reason they cannot build is because they have wars on every single side. God promised IPC at the beginning of the year that he was going to give us rest from all of our troubles. That he was going to give us rest on every single side. And I believe that it's time for the church, it's time for us as believers to come to grips and to, and to come into agreement with God. And to, guess what, 
to back away from all the wars, back away from it, because enough is enough. Somebody type that in. Enough is enough. At some point, we got to get tired of fighting. We got to get tired of fighting each other. We got to get tired of all these senseless wars. We got to get tired of dragging each other. We got to get tired of putting our mouths on each other. We got to get tired of dragging people's names through the mud. We got to get tired of that because there is more to life than that. There is more to life than warring. And let me go ahead and throw this out here. And this is probably going to hit somebody the wrong way. A lot of us will fight for the wrong cause before we'll fight for the, for, for the right cause. We won't fight for what's right, but we'll fight for what's wrong all day long. Okay? So we got to learn how to pick our battles. But faith causes you to look at life differently. Why? Why do I look at life differently when I'm looking through the eyes of faith? It's because when I'm looking at life through the eyes of faith, I'm looking at life as if I know that my life is in the hands of God. God has me. You know, I'm trusting God with everything. Okay. Um, let me define something for you real quick. Uh, what is rest? God's rest is a state or place where God rules and manages his creation. What is rest? God's rest is a state or place where God rules and manages his creation. Somebody type that in. God's rest is a state, it's a state of mind or a place where God rules and he manages his creation. So, so listen, if you don't want God to manage your life, you will never have real rest or peace. Okay? Because if, if, if you're not willing to open up the door and to allow God to manage your life, then you will never find that peace that you need. Rest is also a place, it is a place free from chaos and disorder brought about by sin and rebellion. Rest is also a place free from chaos and free from disorder that is brought about by sin and rebellion. Anytime you have sin and rebellion, there's going to always be some chaos. And God says he wants to free us from sin and he wants to free us from rebellion so that he can free us from chaos. Some, some people, some of you on here right now, and you're about to lose your mind this morning. You woke up and your mind is in chaos. Your spirit is in chaos. You have an unrest about yourself. You have an unrest about your life right now. And you have an unrest about your future. And God says you need to free yourself from some things. In order for you to find that place of rest, there are some things that has to go. There are some people that have to go. There are some things that you got to detach from in order to be in that space that God wants you in. Now, when you're looking for rest and when you're looking for peace, everybody cannot go to that place with you. Sometimes you have to duck off to yourself by yourself so that you can experience that peace that God wants you to have. A lot of us, we miss out on, the, on our peace because we're trying to bring peace breakers with us. That'll never work. You can't miss, you can't experience peace with a peace breaker in the same space as you. Okay. And so God wants to remove sin. He wants to remove rebellion because it creates a space called chaos. And we know that God is not a God of confusion. Okay. And, and listen, you cannot enter God's rest being a control freak. You cannot enter God's rest being a control freak because remember, Anytime God comes in, God has to be in control. And some people do not want to relinquish control. They don't want to relinquish power. They do not want to come under the submission and power of God. And so you cannot be a control freak and be under God's submission and his power. Because you always try to overpower him. You always try to do your own thing. You cannot discern God's voice and his direction if you always have to be in control. You have to learn what submission is all about. And submission, submission to God is the best place to be. The word submission means to rank under. It means to fall under the hierarchy, 
It means that you understand that God is first and he's foremost. God is in control and you are willing to submit to his power and his authority. When you begin to submit to God's power and authority, that's when you begin to experience your best life. That's when you begin to experience God in new ways. That's when God begins to reveal new revelation to you and open up doors and, and begin to give you insight on things. You have to learn how to submit. You cannot be a child of God and continue to do your own thing. You can't do it. Okay? So you must give up your power, your need for power and control, and come under the submission of God. So once again, rest is a state or place of mind where God manages his creation. Okay? Okay, so in Genesis chapter 12, this is what we have. We have God uh, who is beginning the work of restoring humanity. If you go back to chapters 10 and 11, you know, you know, back on up a little bit more, you see where the flood happened. The flood happened. But in chapter 12, you see God restoring humanity. Okay? God was trying to bring humanity to a place of rest. In order for him to do that, he had to call some people out of their comfort zone because in order for people to experience rest, that means that people are going to have to answer to God's call on their life. If God has called you to do something, you doing it is going to bring other people into a place of rest. It's going to also bring you into a place of rest and, and pull you out of that place of war. Because if you're not doing what God called you to do, then you're in a place of war right now. You're warring against what God wants you to do. You're warring against the mandate of God on your life. And you can never have true peace or rest if you are running from what God called you to do. You're doing the same thing that Jonah did. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He did not want to go and preach to those people. He did not want to embrace God's assignment for his life. So the Bible says that he went down to Joppa. He went down to Joppa. Notice the direction that he went. He went down to Joppa. Anytime you are going in the wrong direction, anytime your direction is diametrically opposed to the direction that God wants you to go, the direction is always down. You know, so how did God uh, begin to restore humanity? First, by initiating the work through a vessel. By initiating a work through a vessel. This is where he called Abram. He called him out of Chaldea and he told him to go to a place that he would show him. So when God begins to restore a thing and to bring his people into a place of rest, he always calls someone out of their comfort zone to lead the way. He always calls someone out of their comfort zone to lead the way. So in order to embrace God's call on your life, you have to be willing to give up your place of comfort. You have to be willing to give up your place of comfort in order to accomplish what God wants to accomplish through you. You have to remember when you give your life to God, then you immediately become a vessel that God feels and that God uses. Okay. And so in order for you to go to where God is calling you to, you got to leave the place that he called you from. OK, so that's very important. Next, he called Abram to follow him to do the work. Somebody has to be willing to do the work in order for people to experience rest. Somebody has to do the work. The reason we can vote today is because somebody had to do the work. The, the reason we have rights today is because somebody had to do the rest, the, the, the work. The reason we have some peace today is because somebody had to go before us and do the work. And the scripture teaches us that uh, the work is plentiful, the plentiful, but the laborers are, are few. And so I believe that God is still calling people to uh, partake uh, in this work so that his people can experience rest on every side because Abram's obedience to the call God eventually delivered his descendants from slavery and called them into a covenant relationship with himself now it's very important to, to know that when God calls you it's very important that you are able to discern his voice 
because there are a lot of people speaking. There are a lot of people talking and you have to be able to discern God's voice from people's voice. I believe that today we're living in a world where people are saying they're speaking for God and God never said what they're saying. And so it's very important to know when you're hearing man and hearing God. Okay, you, you have to be able to discern that because everybody that's listen, everybody that's saying they're speaking for God is not speaking for God. You need discernment. Somebody please type that in. We need discernment. We need ears to hear what God is saying. Okay. Philippians 1 6 says this. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out or carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. Since God wants you to have rest on every side, since God wants you to have peace, that means he's, he's, he's going to begin a work in you. And when God begins a work in you, no matter how it looks in between, God is going to complete that work. That should have gave somebody a peace of mind right there because he's called you to do something and you got lost in the middle. I need you to hear me. God is going to complete that work. If God called you to it, he's going to bring you through it. He's going to complete that work if he started the work, because the scripture says being confident that he who began the good work in you notice that he began the good work in you. OK, a lot of people are saying that God called them to do so many things, but God always starts his work inside out. He's not like people. People do things outside in. God says, no, I work inside out. OK, because he wants to do a an inward transformation that works its way out. Okay, so God always starts inside out. But if God started a good work in you, whatever that work is, he's going to complete it. He's going to complete it. I don't care what you're caught up in. Doesn't matter how it looks. Doesn't even really matter how you feel right now about the work that God called you to. Sometimes I feel some type of way about my assignment. But guess what? I know that since God started this work, it is his responsibility to complete it through me. It is his responsibility. And I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not. Nobody can take my position. Nobody can move me. Nobody can take my assignment. Nobody can do anything that God called me to do. He's going to complete it. He's going to complete it. When he's done with when when I'm done with my assignment and when God is complete with this assignment, if he ever chooses to be done with it, then guess what? I just continue to hear his voice and go to the next thing. But if God started a work in you, he's going to finish that work. That should have given you a peace of mind. Okay? God never starts a work that he doesn't finish. Mm. God never starts a work that he doesn't finish. Now, I'm going to give you a few biblical illustrations of people who entered rest in the midst of chaos. First, I want to remind you of the uh, three Hebrew boys who went into the fiery furnace and they came out unharmed. Now, if they can be in a fiery furnace and still have a place of rest in a flaming place, then you can too. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I I know that we, we're going through a lot in our city. People got a lot going on in their lives. But guess what? Even in the midst of what you're going through, God can still give you peace on every side. God can still give you peace on every side. You got people dragging you. You got people dogging you. You got people using you. Some of you may be uh, dealing with sickness in your body. I don't know what you're going through, but I just need you to hear this part right here. No matter what you're going through, you can have peace on every side. You can have peace on every side. Even if you got chaos in your home, even if you have chaos on your job, it's not about what they're doing to you, but it's about your ability to enter that place of rest. 
You got to be able to find that place of rest in the midst of chaos. Because the chaos is not going to stop. The confusion is not going to stop. People are going to always be people. But even when they are being who they are and showing you who they are, you still got to be able to find that place of rest. You cannot be a part of the chaos. You got to enter that place of rest. You got to be able to find that place of rest. There ought to be times in your life where people ask you, now, how are you so calm about this? How are you so calm about this situation going on in your life? How are you able to keep it together? People should be coming to you asking you how you're able to keep yourself together when they see everything around you falling apart. That's when you know that you have entered that place of rest. Mm. And so even though they were in the fiery furnace, they were still able to find that place of rest. And, and, and I need you to know that no matter what you're going through, it has an expiration date. Whatever problem you're having right now, this too shall pass. There is no problem or no pain that lasts forever. Mm, I learned that from somebody. But whatever you're going through has an expiration date, meaning that this too shall pass. Weeping may endure for a night, but somebody know where I'm going with this. But joy comes in the morning. Troubles don't last always. And so and so so I need you to hear me. Go ahead and enter that place of peace in your mind. Go ahead and enter that place of peace. I don't know. It might be a place in your home where you find peace, wherever that place is in your heart and in your mind or in your house or in your car or wherever it is. You need to get to that place. And if it brings you peace, you need to stay right there. You need to stay right there. You need to stay right there. Don't move. Because in that place where you have found rest. You will hear the voice of God. In that place where you found rest, where you found peace, you will hear the voice of God. And in that place is where God will give you your next instructions. In that place, it's hard to hear God in the midst of chaos. It's hard to hear God with, with all this confusion around. It's hard to hear God when everybody around you is trying to tell you what to do with your life. Find that place of peace. Stay put. And God will meet you in that place. And he'll give you your next instruction. Next, we have Daniel, who went into the lion's den. Even in the lion's den... Daniel did not panic. Why didn't he panic? He didn't panic because he found the place of peace. When you know God for real, I need somebody to hear me. When you know God for real, it will always lead you to that place of peace. When you know him for real, you'll always find that place of peace. God wants you to have rest. Some of you need to simply get off social media. If you are always warring on social media, just get off. Just get off. Don't, don't, don't post nothing. And stop looking for people to post stuff about you. So, too many people read too much into social media. You're allowing something that's supposed to be a blessing to become a curse to you. And a lot of people simply cannot handle social media if they simply just get off of it for a while, they will find a place of peace. They will have a peace of mind and they might find themselves. Sometimes you got to take a break. Find yourself. In each scenario that I just gave you, the people rested and trusted in the power of God. They rested and trusted in the power of God. How many of you are trusting in the power of God? How many of you are truly trusting and resting in the power of God? If you are, I just need you to type amen. If you are resting and trusting in the power of God, meaning I'm not trusting in my human strength and ability. I am resting and I am trusting in the power of God to carry me to where I need to be. 
I'm tired of trying to do it my way. I'm tired of trying to do this on my own. God has better for me. And the only way that I can get it is if I submit to his power and authority. I cannot be a control freak and get everything God has for me. At some point, I got to follow his leadership. And somebody knows this, especially some of you older saints. He might not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Let me read what Deuteronomy 135 says. Somebody turn there with me. I'm about to let you out of here early today. Deuteronomy 135. Somebody type this in. Everyone who started out with you won't end up in the same place. Everyone who started out with you will not end up at the same destination. Deuteronomy 135 says this. Not one of these men, this evil generation, shall see the good, good land which I swore to give your father, except Caleb, the son of of Jephunneh, he shall see it, and to him and to his sons I will give the land on which he has set his foot, because he has followed the Lord fully. Now, Lord have mercy. If you follow the Lord fully, it comes with blessings. There are the the whole the whole band of family of the Israelites were stamped out. When they came out of Egypt, they all died except for Caleb and Joshua. God allowed Caleb and Joshua to enter into the promised land. Why? Because they trusted him completely. And so there's no way that you can enter a place of rest without trusting God. Trusting God is a prerequisite for walking into a place of rest. When you don't trust God, you don't experience peace or rest. Let me say that again. If you don't trust God, you don't experience peace or rest. The reason the children of Israel did not make it over into the promised land is because they did not trust God completely. Joshua and Caleb they did. They trusted God completely. They took him at his word. And because they did, he allowed them to enter that place of peace. And so I said all of that to say this right here. As long as you are warring, as long as you are at war in your spirit, and as long as you are at war with other people, the building is going to stop. As long as you are at war with other people and as long as you are at war in your own soul, the, the, the building, the building, what God wants to build in your life is going to cease. David, King David, could not build a temple for God because he could not stop fighting long enough. And because he could not stop warring and because he could not stop fighting, then God passed down what David was supposed to do to his son. Now, there is something that God wants you to build. There is something that God wants you to do. Don't make him pass it down to your children because you were not in position to do it yourself. Don't make God pass your assignment down to somebody else. Because you are out of position to do it yourself. God wants to give you peace on every side. The scripture says in Romans chapter 12, as much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Let me say it again. As much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. In essence, what Paul is saying, to the best of your ability, as much as lies within you, do whatever you can to make peace with the people around you. 
Because if there is chaos and confusion, it gets in the way of the momentum of your kingdom purpose. Let me say it again. As much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. And listen, if you are a believer, you are a child of God and you listening to me, there are some people that you need to go and apologize to. You've been waiting on an apology. God says, I know that you were not even in the wrong, but I still want you to be the bigger person. And then once you go and you apologize for something you did not do, God says, just trust me with the results. Trust me with the results. Sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do it. That It comes with being a child of God. God will ask you to do things that only he can give you the strength and the power to do. Some of you need to go make it right with your parents. You need to go make it right with your children. You need to go make it right with those people who helped you get to where you are. You need to go make it right. Because that's, what, that, that's part of honor. That's what honor is. And so I just came to just remind you that God wants to give us peace on every side. How can we have peace in this world if we can't even find peace in our own community? And so I'm going to pray for us and I pray that God would give us peace because he promised it. But I don't think everybody want it. But those of you who really want that peace, it's time for you to walk in it. And you will know that you are walking in that peace because you'll also be walking in faith. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who is our ark. It is because we hide in him that we truly have peace. He is the one who protects us from the flood. He is the one who protects us from the elements of this world. He's the one who we hide in. The scripture teaches us to be in Christ. And so we thank you for that relationship. We thank you for that position. We thank you for that posture. And I'm praying right now that your people will enter that place of rest, God. You promise us peace that surpasses all understanding. We want it. We want that peace. And I'm praying right now in the mighty name of your son that you would lead and guide us, Lord. That you would help us to, uh, help us to make some things that were wrong, make them right. Help us to apologize. Help us to reconcile. Help us to work some things out, God, that others are even trying to figure out. We thank you, God, for being God all by yourself and having all power in your hands. We thank you, God, for every moment that you allow us to be on top of the earth and the earth not on top of us. We thank you, God, that it is in you that we live, move, and find our strength. And I'm just asking right now, Lord, that you would touch every person who's listening to this live, God, that you would increase all of our faith because we need it. The Bible teaches us that without faith, it is impossible to please you and that those who come to you must believe that you are and that you are a reward of those who diligently seek you, God. We are seeking you, God, not just for what's in your hand, God. We're seeking you for who you are. We need you to be a very present help in our life, God. We need you to be that thriving force that lead and guide us, Lord. We need you, God, every single day of the of the, of the of the day, every moment, every second, God, we need you, God. Apart from you, we can do nothing, Lord. We need you to be our light, God. We need you to be our strength. We need you to be our refuge, God. We need you to be everything to us, God. So, so we are leaning and depending on you, Lord. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing, God. We know that in our human strength, we will only fail, God, but we know that there's no failure in you. So I'm asking God for strength, to be made perfect in your people today. Because the, the Bible teaches us when we are weak, then are we strong. Help us to look to the shepherd. Help us to look to the hills from which, to the one from which comes our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. I pray, God, that you would just bathe us in your love, that you would bathe us in your mercy, that you would bathe us in your grace, God. Because without it, God, we cannot make it. And so I'm praying, God, that you would touch every person that has lost a loved one in this city for however they lost them, God, whether it was through COVID-19 or whether it was through violence, whether it was through natural causes, however they've lost a loved one. I'm praying for comfort right now, God. Your people need comfort. I pray that you would let everybody know that you're real, God, that you're real. Show them that you are real to them, God, that you are real to us. We need you, Lord, because we know we can't make it without you. We're desperate for you. 
And I'm praying for the church, Lord, the church at large, the universal body of Christ, that we would not grow weak because the doors of the church are not open, God. I pray that we would just constantly get stronger and stronger, God, that you would allow us to, to not forget what you called us to do, God, that you called us to be a witness to this dark, dark world, God, to be a light in a dark place. And so we thank you once again, Lord, for all you've done, all you're doing, and all that you're going to do. We love you because you first loved us. And I pray, God, that you would give us peace on every side, peace in our homes, peace on our jobs, peace in our hearts. Give us peace, God, everywhere we go. Let us be peacemakers. The scripture says, bless are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And so we love you once again for all you've done. We love you for who you are. Thank you for not walking out on us. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful even when we've been unfaithful. In Jesus' holy name, we love you and we thank you. Amen. Well, uh, I want to extend an invitation. If you don't know him today, if you don't know him, I, I just simply want to extend an invitation. An invitation to a relationship. Not religion. Relationship. If you don't know him, I don't care what type of shape you're in, what you've done, what you're coming out of, what you're in. The God that we serve is so merciful that he will step into your situation with you. He will step into your situation with you. We don't serve a God who waits on you to step out of it. He steps into the situation with you and he carries you out. That's how, that's how it works. He did the same thing with the children of Israel. He constantly reminded them that I am the one who carried you out. And if he did it for them, he'll do it for you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so if you don't have a relationship with him, it ain't about having a relationship with the pastor, with the man or the woman. It's not about that. It's good to have that. But if you have a relationship with them and don't have a relationship with Yahshua, if you don't have a relationship with Yahweh, if you don't have a relationship with the most high God, that's what I invite you to. I invite you to a relationship with him. Because if you have a relationship with him, then that is your place of rest. And if you don't know, him, the Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead and you shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be saved, not might be, shall be saved. He's coming back. He's coming back for his church. He's coming back for his church. And when he comes back, you better make sure that you got your business straight. That's very important. Make sure that your relationship with him is intact because people are going to constantly die. People are going to constantly leave this earth. But that is not about that. It's about being ready when he calls your name. Okay? And so if you don't know him, I also want to say to um, my Inner Peace Church family, um, I know sometimes out of sight is out of mind. But you might be out of sight, but you're never out of my mind. But even more than that, you're never out of God's mind. And I cannot wait until we get back in here. Uh, in, in the building so that we can uh, fellowship because I think one of the things that we miss the most is the fellowship. We miss hugging each other. We miss laughing with each other. We, la we miss smiling. We know that every church has its issues. <clears throat> every church has its issues. Every church has its wars and fights and confusion going on. But uh, nothing can compare. Nothing can compare to being able to see your family and to hug them and to just tell them that you love them you know so we miss all of that and at some point I, I believe that the Lord will get us back to it you know and I wish that we could come back to church I wish we could open the doors and have a service but me as your pastor I am not willing to risk you catching COVID-19 in our building and catching it from one another just to have a church service. We're going to continue to do this. And, I, and listen, I love teaching. I love teaching. Uh, and I have adapted to teaching online, but I would rather be in the church. I, I don't mind doing this. I can do either or, you know, but I, I miss preaching because there's a different type of energy 
there's a different anointing that hits you uh, when you are around like minded people. There, there's a different spirit that takes off uh, when you're around people that God has delivered and that God has blessed and that God is working on their behalf. There, there's a different type of flow. There's a different type of energy uh, that hits when you when you come to when the saints come together. You know, and, and some of that we don't get it through the live, you know, so. Uh, but you better believe that once we get back in the building. That once we get back in the building, I mean, listen, I have so much that I need to release. I have so much that I need to release that's going to be released when we get back in this building. It's going to be released. It's going to be released. I know somebody saying, well, why you can't do that at home? Listen, there's a different feeling and there's a different atmosphere when you're in the same place with other believers and I cannot wait until we get back to it, you know, so, uh, but those of you who want to support our ministry because, uh, and some of you have supported our ministry and let me say thank you for that. And for those of you, uh, who have fallen off supporting, you know, especially our church family, you know, do what you can to support. We know that times are tough right now. We understand that, you know, and, um, you know, do what you can when you can. You know, God will lead you in that. But for those of you who can, you know, you can cash out Inner Peace Church or you can text give to 423-320-320. What's the number tab? She'll, she'll type it in the comments. I, I went blank. Or you can go to our website, which is www.innerpeacechurch.org and you can give online. Once again, uh, thank you. Uh, for being consistent. Thank you for praying for and with us. And thank you for being patient because um, these lives don't really seem like church, you know, uh, but, you know, we just got to do what we can do, uh, what we have to until we can do what we, what we want to, you know, so, uh, but I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Let me say that one more time before I get out of here. I am Pastor King. I love you. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I don't care how you feel about me, but there's nothing you can do about me loving you. But even more than that, God loves you too. I'm Pastor King. I'm out. Talk to y'all later.